Hi guys, how's it going your end? I myself, I'm triggered. <laughs> this video is a result of this and sorry, it will be a longer intro than the actual points themselves, but don't worry, I'll get there. It's all because I was in a podcast recently where a group of Muslims graciously let me join their panel when they were discussing atheists. Well, not really. The topic was common enemy of the Abrahamic faith is atheism. These Muslims are scared shitless and they are truly petrified of people without a God belief. And they're quite right to do. Now, first off, I detest the words atheist and atheism. Both, in my eyes, they have no place in an educated society, just as there's no a racist. Now, I'm not easily identified by what I am not or what I don't have. I'm a person, not a non-stamp collector. And I don't actively engage in a dragonism just because I don't believe dragons exist. So I don't constantly think about gods and dragons for that matter. I'm just not worried about them. I don't adjust my life because of either of these things, because it's just a tiny facet of my person. I do, however, address the issue if and when it unnecessarily restricts my lifestyle with ancient superstitious nonsense. Now, the default position is always to not believe something exists if it has not been demonstrated to exist. So if something has been shown that it exists, we should believe it. But until then, we should remain undecided or to use a different word, agnostic. Now, gnostic, let me just quickly explain this, is derived from in etymology from ancient Greek, gnosticos, having knowledge. And this became gnosticism. A collection of ideas and beliefs. But today, the word is used to convey either the knowledge of an unspecified something, this can be anything, or a confirmation of religious ideas or existence. The opposite is, of course, agnostic. That is to say, not having the knowledge of something. And since in epistemology, knowledge is a subset of belief, I define this as belief, in other words, this being convinced of something and even without evidence. Okay? And then the subset, knowledge, which then in turn requires experience of facts. So there's, there's other beliefs just such as you know, justified beliefs. So if, if you believe that the sun will come up tomorrow, I think you're justified in believing that because it does happen on occasion. So yeah. Anyway, with so strictly speaking, Agnostic is not having knowledge of something, but then the usage in connection with gods would make everyone an agnostic, since nobody can demonstrate the existence or non-existence of gods everywhere in the universe or outside or whatever. So the usage of us today has shifted somewhat in that being an agnostic is more along the lines of being undecided whether there is a god or not. What remains fixed and generally accepted is the definition of an atheist as a person without a God belief. And this, this was way back in the Middle Ages where this was coined, where basically everyone was considered to believe in one of the gods or several of them. And people who did not subscribe to a regionally accepted version were ostracized, labeled in a derogatory fashion using this demeaning expression, atheist. Just like in Islam, a kafir is someone who knowingly suppresses the truth. Now, in addition, many Jesus Christ-based owners of <laughs> dictionaries, they adorn and, and then poison the word atheist, okay? It, they, they express this non-belief using negative attributes. So there's a whole host of them. So this can be like lack of belief, missing belief, rejecting, and, it's, and so this many. I mean, this one's claim this is a, a Christian one, is the denial of the existence of God. And it continues, that it is to live as though there was no God. <laughs> that practical atheism is widespread in its influence and a dangerous element in our modern life. It's really sad how afraid they are of reality and truth. So for us talking about gods and, and beliefs in them, we need to agree on a definition every single time we use the word atheist. 
another reason why I don't use and reject this label outright. The same is the case then with atheism, where you know, ism is, is a goal. It, it, it follows something and you have set rules and you know, which simply not believing something does not have any of that. The word itself can be approached, of course, in different ways, like using philosophy or psychology or ontology. And this will present us with slightly different ways of using it. Now, I personally reject it to the emotional baggage associated with it. And because I don't see not believing something as a position, a claim or a statement, I'm just passive. But to facilitate dialogue, I will, like I have on occasion in the past, simply go along. And I will accept it, you know, just for argument's sake. And one more thing I need to point out, and that is the positioning of, of a negation. All right. This is a, a lot of people um, get very confused by saying, I don't believe X exists is very different from I believe X does not exist. The former is passive, simply awaiting evidence, and the latter is more active, requiring an explanation at least. So we need to pay attention to these details. Okay, Get, let's go back to the original topic. The so my attempt in this podcast to try and make the different usages and definitions clear to the others thoroughly failed. It ended up in a shouting match because everybody disagreed. And I next tried to explain why I don't believe and what the implications are. But I don't know. I, okay, I got emotional and we got bogged down in explaining the Quran to Muslims. Eventually, the host came in and tried to hold my feet to the fire to get some straight answers from me regarding my non-belief regarding God, which is what should have happened from the start. But before I could actually explain anything, I got censored and kicked off. They just couldn't handle it. Now, in the course of this exchange, what was actually an interesting question, and this is prompting this video now, and something I actually only realized later, and this was a missed opportunity. And, and this is this. The question was, the question now what is, has what atheism, atheism done, done for you, you today? Now, for me, this question is nonsensical. Right? But it can be used to clarify this entire mess, all the, the misconceptions around this. So, as I mentioned earlier, the default position is not to believe what has not been demonstrated. So, there is no good reason for me to believe that gods exist. So, I don't. Maybe this is why, this is what explain it, this, it is easier for me to understand the mindset of someone who does believe gods exist than it is the other way around. It seems to be impossible to get a brain which is infected by a god virus to understand what goes on in the mind of a non-believer. So the immediate answer to what this non-belief can do for you is of course nothing. There is no fake comfort or imagined emotional support in not having a God in your life. There's no group thing. There's no afterlife, no soul, no reward after you die, no celestial wine or virgins to welcome men when they're dead. There's no security blanket for those who need a God to get through the day. It's just harsh, cold reality. Can theists now rejoice and feel smug about their beliefs? Uh, what about ethics, honesty, integrity, and authenticity? Are these all things that are easy to ignore? Is a delusion worth more than reality? And in essence, is this question about atheism doing something a valid or even a useful question? Can there be anything worthwhile in not having gods in your life? And if yes, what does it take and what is the most positive consequence? Because it doesn't do anything. But the answer is, is very simple. It's this critical thinking. Because while not believing gods exist has no dynamic action and, and subsequent result, nothing immediate anyway, there are benefits. This, this not believing gods exist, it enables things that are locked away for the believer. Like this thing which is essential in my eyes, this, this critical thinking, the ability to inspect something void of self-correcting glasses and only relying on the raw truth, verifying something against reality. And this is where I finally get to what the benefits are of not believing gods exist. What are the, okay, the most prominent things, this, it's three things, freedom of expression, I can doubt, 
and I can change my mind. And those, for me, are the three most important things. But a theist can't allow that, not for themselves and not for others, because it would trigger doubt, and that is not allowed. All of us, you know, who are active on, on social media in, in, in different ways, we've all had plenty of messages from believers of, you know, different gods, thanking us for opening their eyes and bringing doubt and critical thinking into their lives, because we are allowed to speak about gods and their incompetence and their followers and, and their, their dogma and their doctrines and everything. Where theists can't have that. And some groups and even entire nations are rigorously censoring the internet to avoid free expression and subsequent doubt, which can make a theist want to change their mind if they are so inclined. And what else? Is that all? No, there's plenty. Okay, but I'm not going to explain every item I come up with here. Okay, If you want to know this, give me a shout and I'll explain it. Because there's, there's simple things like being able to have a hobby, like, like any sport, like dancing or making music. I can decide for myself and I don't have to follow what some old man said hundreds or even a thousand years ago. Or I can remain undecided. It's my choice and my preference, as long as I don't impinge on the rights of others or induce suffering. I don't need certainty. And I readily accept I don't know as a valid and honest answer. I don't accept certainty, especially when this actually turns out to be a mere claim. I can question anything and everyone, anyone, anything, even myself. I can treat people with the respect they have earned and deserve. I have the personal strength to acknowledge equal human rights for everyone. So I'm a man who can handle a woman with equal human rights because I have the strength. I'm not weak. I can wear what I want, how I want, when I want. I can eat what I want, where I want, when I want. I can fall in love with whoever I want. I can have sex with whoever I want in whatever position we choose together where we both agree that this is beneficial for both of us. And, very important, I can even kill whomever I want. And that is just what I have done today. I have killed exactly the number of people I want to kill. And that is zero, because it's what I want. It's not because an old book has promised me fake virgins and a permanent erection or something, but, but because I am a sentient, humble human being who does not claim certainty or knowledge of everything. I'm a human with empathy and the ability to use reason and logical thinking to make sense of this place. That is why my morality is on a much higher level. And you can ask me about incest and abortion and things like that. And usually we will agree on these things. But simply because I don't do something beneficial for others expecting a reward and don't do something detrimental for the fear of punishment, I am basing this on my own moral compass. So you can't condemn me for that. But I can and will condemn, amongst other things, the punishment of homosexuals and apostates, or the marriage of a six-year-old girl to an old man. I can do that. Some theists can't. Just because I don't believe talking ants or flying donkeys exist does not make me a worse or a bad person. But it is why some Muslims are so scared. It shows how amazingly simple it is to refute all the claims they make as well as exposing their flawed view of science and morality. Not believing gods exist enables me to condemn anyone who performs a sexual act on a nine-year-old girl. It enables me to condemn any kind and type of slavery, the owning of another human being as an object. It enables me to condemn any kind of genital mutilation of babies. It enables me to love my family even if we differ in our beliefs regarding gods. It enables me to accept other human beings, even if they are not exactly like me and don't believe everything that I believe. So it enables 
tolerance. And that is the benefit of not believing gods exist. It enables thinking, critical thinking and tolerance. Is there anything advantageous for mankind that I can't do that a theist can? I can't think of anything. But can followers of a God do something disadvantageous for mankind that a non-believer can't? And now we have several examples right there that we can all think of. Because the God virus has caused and is still causing death, destruction and division in many ways in the name of the gods. So my conclusion is a theism, as in rejecting the proposition that gods exist, does not do anything for you, but it enables a whole different worldview, a world based on reality, not a backward, violent and primitive book. Thanks and let's stay in touch. Cheers for now. Bye bye.